What determines whether you buy a record or not? Uh, somebody tell you about it, you hear it on the radio, what's, what's your story? I hear it on the radio. Hear it on the radio. So the same with you? If I can dance to it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you can dance to it. Well, mm -hmm. the hear it on the radio is usually the answer. And the man you're about to meet started out getting people playing records on the radio. He's what they call a promotion man. And a lot of artists' careers hang in the balance because of the promotion man's work. All of a sudden, he finds himself out front. Now, he's depending, I'm sure, on some other promotion man to get his rec records heard. Uh, his first name is Rob, but the, the, uh, the album bears only his last name. And you're going to hear a lot from him in the next year. We'll talk a little more about his uh, career and his various talents. Please read, greet, greet, greet. <laughs> Notice how smoothly he handles it. Just took the man's career and put it away. No, please welcome Hegel.
Bob, come on, let's, let's, we'll find a spot over here in the daylight here. How does a guy go from, uh, from plugging records, Rob, to singing them and writing them? And uh, I haven't even begun to scratch your career surface. I followed up your introduction handsomely, but how long ago was it you were plugging records? Well, I was plugging records about 10 years ago for various labels around in the Midwest. Where, where's your home originally? Originally Dayton, Ohio. Oh, um, I don't know how to put this. Now that you're on the other side of the fence, are you worried about the guy out there hawking your wares for you? I mean, I've heard a lot of rec record artists say, my career is in somebody else's hands. Is that true? Yes, but one of the nice things about having done that is that I know a lot of the promoters with RCA, and, you know, they've got a fine staff out there, and so I just, you know, kind of trust them to do it, and they'll do the job or, or not do the job. You can also give them a few tips along the way, too. That That's true. Have... Well, the artist also <laughs> helps them out. Uh, during, uh, in about three days now, there's uh, the Mayor Koch in New York has this big music festival week. Are you going to work that? I've heard about it. I know all about it. Yeah, I'm going to be playing at the GM Plaza the 30th and uh, then I'll be doing the bottom line that week. So it's like a big music festival all week in New York, and everybody's kind of excited about it, and the mayor gets behind it. It's a lot of well, then, then you can, I mean, not only does it help you, it helps the city of New York and all that. Speaking of New York, you have written the score to a Broadway show, but the show is not out yet? No, the show opens tentatively. The scheduled date is spring. That's a big date. Spring of 1981. And What's it called? It's called Hyde, based on Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. You wrote music and words? No, I, wrote, I, wrote the, I write the score for the musical. Uh, the lady named Amanda George, who wrote the lyrics to Her Lovers After All, is writing the libretto or lyrics. It's a far cry from Dayton, Ohio, and plug-in records out there in Radioland. Did you write this song? Uh, the, the one, the one you're about to do? Yes, this is music and lyrics by me, out of my mind. All right, ladies and gentlemen, one more time, please, Rob Hagel.